earned his DDS degree in Ohio State University and the degree of diplomat in the American Academy of Craniofacial Pain. Based in Columbia, Maryland, Dr. Sims has practiced for over 30 years treating snoring and sleep apnea patients. Part of his practice focuses on the link between dentistry and its effect on various movement disorders. He has lectured worldwide on the perspective dentistry has on modern advances of TMJ treatment and on the possible abeyance of certain movement disorders. His treatment results have been published in peer-reviewed journals, including the Journal of Craniomandibular Practice, the Journal of Pain Medicine, and Medical Hypothesis. Dr. Sims has developed a new paradigm shift on the thinking of Tourette syndrome, cervical dystonia, and complex regional pain syndrome, CP, uh, CRPS, associated with other disorders related to TMJ and jaw movement. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Anthony Sims. Morning, everybody. Morning. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'm supposed to read this thing. It says, I do not have any financial interest of a product in my talk or with any companies offering grant money for this continuing dental and medical education program. I do not. All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Love it, love it, love it. All right. Um, I want to first thank everyone, the IAOMT folk, Dr. Fisher. I, I really appreciate him inviting me, uh, Becky, and, uh, and all the folk that, uh, that captured me to get here. Now, before I start, for those of you who know me, and for those of you who do not know me, I start every lecture, every lecture, with I, Dr. Sims, believe in God. I believe that he has given me the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding to be able to do the things that you're about to see be done. Because I believe with God, all things are possible. Now, with all that said, the, the neurological aspects of dentistry and its relationship to movement disorders. What I want to do, let me make sure I get this thing right. All right. How many in here have ever experienced a movement disorder. I want you to raise your hand and then put it down, because I don't want anybody to think, you know, little of you. But I want to, I want all those who have raised their hand, I want to say I thank you for being strong, I thank you for being courageous, and I want to thank you for being truthful. The reason I say that is because the rest of you who didn't are fibbers. All of y'all, as they say in my neighborhood, all of y'all are fibbers. The reason I say that is because, all right, let me ask, has anyone ever experienced the, uh, the uh, movement disorder? called sternutation. How many? Again, all of you are fibbers. Sternutation. All right, what do I got to stand for this thing? Works. Sternutation is the act of sneezing. 
Now, how many have had a stern mutation? All right. All right. Let me, let, me ask, let me ask this other question. I'm just talking to the fellas in the room, okay? Just the guys in the room. I want you to point out all the women that you know who sneeze like this. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, point them out. Point them out. Point them out. Go ahead. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Women, revenge time. I want you to point out all the fellas in the room that you know that sneeze like this. <laughs> point them out. Point them out. Uh huh. The thing is, you have to have knowledge. You have to know what you're talking about. Knowledge makes you a good student. Then you have to understand what you're talking about. That makes you a good teacher. But if you want to be a great physician, a great practitioner, you have to have wisdom to know what to do with the understanding and the knowledge that you have. That's how you become a great practitioner. The problem is not people being uneducated. The problem is that they are educated just enough to believe what they've been taught and not educated enough to question what they've been taught. If you always believe what's in the box, you're always going to get what's in the box. The thing to do is to think outside the box. That's why you're here. The term movement disorder refers to a group of nervous system or neurological conditions that cause abnormal increase or decreased movements which may be voluntary or involuntary. Is a sneeze voluntary? Sternutation, or sneezing, is influenced by one nerve. One nerve. It makes your head shake, makes your neck shake, makes your arms and, and hands fly up. Facial grimacing, internal abdominal changes happen. Breathing changes, heart rate changes, all because of one nerve. What nerve is that? Trigeminal. So if, if, you're, if you have an involuntary uh, movement of all these different areas of your body from one nerve, who are those that are supposed to be the masters of the trigeminal nerve? Hello? So who are those who are supposed to be masters of movement disorders? Dentists, specialists working in the, with the brain, dorsal root ganglion, or, special, or spinal cord, or any exquisite tissue formed from the neural tube or a neural crest are called neurologists. As you can see here, the neural crest tube and the neural crest cells make up what portion of the face? The jaws, the maxilla, the eye. So therefore, you would be considered neurologist. But we don't know that we are neurologists, but we are the neurologists of the highest order. All right, let me ask you a question. How many senses do we have? We know these five. How many say we have six? How many say we have seven? How many say we have eight? Knowledge is the key. Understanding is what you need. Do we have the sense of temperature? Do we have a sense of proprioception, knowing where your body is in space? 
Do we have the sense of pain? Do we have the sense of balance or equilibrium? Do we have the sense of vibration? Do we have a chemical sense? And if you really want to get deep, do we have the sense of time? Do we have, you have to have knowledge and don't think about what's in the box. You have to think outside the box. Okay, so how many pathways for movement do we have? We know of from the brain to the spinal cord. We know of from the cerebellum to the spinal cord. And we also know of the spinal reflexes. So how many other pathways do you think we have? How many say three more? How many say six more? Huh? <laughs> There's room for six. Okay. Well, you actually have, you actually have from the red nucleus to the spinal cord, from the brain stem to the spinal cord, from the vestibular system to the spinal cord, from the eyes to the spinal cord, from the brain to the brain stem to the spinal cord, from the spinal interneurons within the spinal cord itself. We also have from the brain to the brain stem to the reticular form or the spinal or the brain stem, from the spine to the thalamus. We also have from the spinal cord to the cerebellum. And then we have from the cerebellum to the vestibular, and we also have the spinal cord to the brainstem. So we have 14 different ones, but we always concentrate on three. Am I correct? Again, you're not listening. Again, you're not listening. What did I say? What was the first thing I, I, I asked you about? Sternutation. So what nerve do we have that's missing there? What nerve? Trigeminal. So you, now you have the trigeminal to the thalamus to the brain. You have from the trigeminal to the cerebellum, from the trigeminal to the vestibular, from the trigeminal to the brain stem. You have 18 different ones including the four that we just mentioned from the, from, the, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the mouth, from the trigeminal system. Not just the three. When you think of only what's in the box, you're only going to get what's in the box. Your, your movement disorders are voluntary or involuntary, increased or decreased movement. You have a damage to the, uh, to the central nervous system, to the peripheral nervous system, or in the muscle itself. These are what causes movement disorders. Now, you have different types of movement disorders. Ataxia. This movement disorder affects the part of the brain that controls coordinated movement from the cerebellum. Ataxia can cause uncoordinated, clumsy balance, speech, or limb movements. Ataxia like I said, I'm old school. How many know Fred Sanford? <laughs> That's ataxia. Cerebral, uh, cervical dystonia. The condition caused long-lasting contractions or spasms, inter intermittent contractions of the neck, uh, causing the neck to turn in different ways. Cervical dystonia. Uh, these people have uh, what they call uh, their, their necks are stuck in one position, usually. They have anterior collis. They have retro collis. They have rotational collis. And they have lateral collis. They cannot move their heads. They can't drive because they can't move their head to see in one direction. Korea is characterized by repetitive, brief, irregular, somewhat rapid involuntary movements that uh, involve the face, mouth, and trunk. Korea is more like a dance-like movement. Have you seen some people dance? Dystonia. Dystonia is also coordination, uh, is condition, sorry, involves sustained involuntary contractions with twisting repetitive movements. These people come in and they're, they're, their hands are stuck in one position. 
Their feet are twisted in one position. Their body is twisted, and they can't move out of that position. That is a dystonia. That is a generalized dystonia. Myoclonus, a condition caused by lightning jer uh, quick jerks of a muscle. Some people feel it. It's a quick jerk. Parkinson's disease. This slowly progressive neurodegenerative disorder causes tremor, stiffness, or rigidity, slow decreased movement, or what is called bradykinesia, or imbalance in their, in their gait. It also, caused by not, it also causes non-movement. That's Parkinson's disease. But there's also something called Parkinsonism, knowledge. Parkinsonism describes a group of conditions that, that symptoms similar to that of Parkinson's disease. Periodic limb movement is repetitive cramping or jerking of the legs during sleep. These people, while they are sleeping, have jerks in their legs, jerks in their limbs. Restless leg syndrome. This movement is caused by unpleasant feeling of uh, uh, abnormal feelings in the legs while relaxing or lying down, often relieved by movement. These people, they're not asleep, but they're very tired. And in order for them to get rid of that sensation in their legs, they got to keep moving. They got to keep moving. They got to get on the elliptical. They got to get on, they got to walk around, walk around, walk around but until it goes away. Tourette syndrome is a neurological condi condition that starts between childhood and teenage years and associated with repetitive movements, motor and vocal, also called tics. Tremor, this movement disorder causes involuntary uh, rhythmic shaking of body parts such as hands, head, or other parts of the body. The most common is essential tremor. Now, they asked me to speak about Parkinson's disease. Guess what? I do not treat Parkinson's disease. What I do treat is Parkinsonism. The same symptoms, but remember, Parkinson's disease is neurodegenerative. Parkinsonism is not. Same symptoms, but a different. Parkinsonism is a, gen is a generic term for a group of symptoms that can be seen in someone with Parkinson's disease, such as tremor, stiffness, and slow, slow movement. Uh, it is, Parkinson's disease is very well treated with medication. Parkinsonism is not treated very well with medication. They just tell you, gotta, you got to do your PT. You got to do this exercise or that exercise, and we hope that it will resolve on itself. Sometimes Parkinsonism is due to medications. The problem with, the, the difference is, Parkin, this is Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism contains Parkinson's disease. Eighty percent of those who have the, that, that problem have Parkinsonism. The, the other 20 percent, I should say, sorry, the, the people who have Parkinsonism, 80 percent of those have Parkinson's disease. The other 20 percent do not. So if they don't have the neurodegeneration and the MRIs look normal, guess what? It's possible to treat these folks. Parkinson, Parkinsonism is syndrome manifested by tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, or slowness of movement, loss of postural reflex. What do we talk about? Dystonia, loss of postural reflex. Flex posture, freezing, gait. Parkinson's disease is 80% of Parkinsonism, and it usually starts around age 70, 70, uh, around 70 years old. Parkinsonism, this is right out, of, right out of the journals, can result from infarcts from structural lesions. That means something went wrong somewhere. Structural lesions, primarily those that affect the basal ganglia or their connections. 
They think that it's just mainly the basal ganglia, this one area in the brain that controls movement. How many areas did we just now talk about that control movement? 18. 18. We just talked about 18 different ones, four of them from the trigeminal nerve. Parkinson's, Parkinson's, uh, there are several conditions other than Parkinson's disease which can uh, cause the, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, such as drug-induced. How do you stop it? Stop the drug. Infections. What are we here to talk about? Toxins. Vascular problems and trauma. Uh, one of the uh, main things that we see or uh, boxers get is called uh, boxers dementia or pugilistic encephalopathy, okay, which can cause the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. There's a famous person that you know who had, was diagnosed with Parkinsonism. Not Parkinson's disease, but everybody says it's Parkinson's disease. You know who that person is? Boy, you guys are good. I like, I like it. So, if a lesion can cause a damage down the road, uh, and it's caused by disease or trauma, what if one nerve has a lesion? It can connect to 1,000 to 10,000 nerves, other axons. So if, if 10 nerves are affected, you get 100,000 nerves that can be damaged. Another thing with Parkinsonism is that you see it a lot in sleep disorders. One of the hottest things in dentistry right now is all about sleep disorders, sleep medicine, sleep dentistry. You, 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 uh, they, they talk about, they don't talk about the periodic limb movements. They don't talk about restless leg syndrome. They talk about just sleep disorders. But these are related. Sleep disorder or sleep problems are more common and more severe in Parkinsonism than in Parkinson's disease. So how do you treat that? You treat, the, you treat the problem, okay? You go to the cause, okay? Sometimes it's the drug, and sometimes they just tell you, you need to do your, uh, your general PT. That's how, they, that's how they tell you to treat Parkinsonism. But I said there are at least four other pathways that may be causing you to have Parkinsonism. You can't treat what you can't see or you do not understand. So what about the 20% of those who have Parkinsonism? Can, it be effect can we affect those people? Can trauma be one of the factors? One of the things in this, uh, uh, we just talked about, in Parkinsonism, you have dystonia. Uh, dystonia is a uh, disorder characterized by involuntary muscle contractions that cause slow, repetitive or abnormal postures. It is one of the uh, overall, uh, in Parkinsonism, 50% of the people actually have it. It is not nor normally the first symptom, but it does happen. The cause of dystonia is not known. Researchers, researchers believe that Dystonia results from abnormality or, in, or damage to the basal ganglia or other areas of the brain that control movement. Currently, there are no medications to prevent dystonia or slow its progression. According to the CDC, according to the Mayo Clinic, according to all these big uh, government officials, there is, quote unquote, no cure for dystonia. It can be idiopathic. That means I don't know where it came from. It can be genetic. Your mom and daddy had it. Or it can be acquired. How do you acquire it? Trauma. There are several types of dystonia. There's cervical dystonia. Blepharospasm is where your eyes actually close down. Your eyelids close down. Oral mandibular dystonia. 
Your facial structures are stuck in one position. Uh, Mage syndrome, where basically that is just blepharospasm and oral mandibular dystonia put together. And task specific, such as musician's uh, dystonia. The hands cramp up. They can't, they can't move uh, their hands to play the piano, play the, uh, uh, the, the flute or the saxophone. The hands cramp. This lady came to see me. She flew from Montana to Maryland because she believed that we can do something for her. This is how she presented to our office. This lady symptoms started 16 years earlier after she had her uh, daughter. 16 years later, this is her, and she's been, to, she's been to the Mayo Clinic, she's been to all the top universities in, her, in, the, in the area, everywhere she's been. This is her two days later, two days. Ready? Okay. Okay, I've got my orthotic in, and my feet are straight, my right leg is straight, and I feel strong, and I'm going to go up the stairs by myself. So. If I can do it, all of y'all can do it. You just have to think. Wow. Five years. Uh -huh. Wow. That's good. Good news. Good news. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good news. <sighs> all right. Maybe, maybe you think that's a fluke. Some, some, uh, some of my colleagues would say, that's a... Uh, that is a sensory trick. I don't know of any tricks but by magic tricks. And the only reason you don't know about magic tricks is because you don't know the mechanism for what, what is being done. All right, here's another case. This lady is 47 years old. Dystonia of both hands and feet. Foot inversion, that means her foot was twisted in. Her hands were twisted in uh, uh, on both sides, right and left. Multiple medications, 12 a day. Uh, difficulty walking. She came in utilizing a wheelchair. Um, photophobia, phonophobia, vomiting, nausea, fatigue, migraines, multiple allergies, dizziness, chest pains. She could walk backwards, no problem, but walking forward was difficult. And she had TMJ pain. Okay, she was rejected by by the uh, by uh, the Mayo Clinic 
rejected by Cleveland Clinic, rejected by all the, the universities uh, that she had been to, been to uh, a, a numerous number of neurologists. They said, we had never seen this before. It, the problem is, she didn't fit within the box. So they told her, it's not, it's not them, it's you. You're the one that has a problem. But we believe that you have this problem. My name's Maria. I am in Dr. Sims' office today, and I'm here to get help with my movement disorder. I had a car accident in April of 2010, and then in October got really tired, and then on November 10th, on a plane ride, quit walking. I was like a human rubber band. My body would shrink. I walked like that for the first year. Um, I could not walk forward at all the first year. And, um, but I could step backwards and walk backwards with this. I've seen lots of doctors. I've been to neurologists who've seen me and said, whoa, I've never seen that before. <laughs> it starts off in my legs. All the muscles pull in and turn. And then when I get really tired, my hands and my arms turn in. Um, in the beginning, I would have spasms. Every time I would lay down or rest, I would go into lots of different body contorting spasms. spasms. I can't type, I can't work, I can't use my hands because nothing, I can't walk. So, will help me not do that at all. I can walk completely normal when we use the tongue blades. I can walk forward, backward, I can even think pretty clearly when I have the tongue blades in place. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to the work. You're up. I can walk all normal and good. Yay! <laughs> Back again? Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow, wow, wow. She can she can walk. The thing is knowledge, understanding and then, then utilizing wisdom to know what to do with the knowledge and the understanding that you have. When you understand where the problem is, it is in the pontine tract of the reticular spinal fibers or the medial uh, ventral pontine reticular formation in the brain stem. Guess what nerve goes in directly, it's the only nerve, matter of fact, that goes directly to the brain stem? Everybody, together. It, makes the, uh, it affects the motor neurons of the neck, the back, the head, and the abdomen. Turns the head to the same side as the damage. Causes the, the, sh the shoulders to shrug on the same side as the damage. This is not new information. This is 1953 information. Blepharospasm. Benign essential blepharospasm is a progressive neurological disorder characterized by involuntary muscle contractions of, and spasms of the eyelid. It is a form of dystonia. Blepharo means eyelid, spasm, uncontrolled movement. Applied mainly for dry eyes or, or Tourette's syndrome. Found in uh, more elderly ladies. Uh, functional blindness. These folk, their eyelids actually close down. And they stay closed for anywhere from uh, a few seconds to a few minutes. So literally, they cannot drive, they cannot watch TV, they cannot walk. They cannot, because they walk into stuff, they, they, they have to rely on someone else to be their eyes and, uh, as they are guided. There is, quote unquote, according to the CDC, according to the NIH, according to all the uh, major clinics, there is no cure for blepharospasm. You're, you're subjected to getting Botox injected into your eyes, eyelids. If you want to talk about pain, that's pain. Uh, oral medications, if that doesn't work. If not, then they go in and cut your eyelid out. They, they will cut your eyelid, and you're relegated to sleeping with an eye patch all the rest of your days. Now, this is an interesting 
uh, article. This was in the Journal of Movement Disorders. Here is a lady, it, this is in 2007, interesting. Lady, 2007, she has May syndrome, basically oral mandibular dystonia and, and, <coughs> and blepharospasm. They gave her an oral orthotic, as you can see. She puts it in and her symptoms discontinue. Now ask, ask me, did they ask the dentist what was the problem? No, they made up something. It's called sensory trick. It's a sensory trick. It just happens. They didn't ask you, did they? They didn't ask me. But they said, it's a sensory trick. I was lecturing in, in uh, uh, New Mexico. You, know, you have no idea how many people follow you online, because I sure didn't know this guy. Didn't know him from Adam. He came up to me, he said, Doc, can, can you help me? I don't know. His eye was closed. All right, there we go. I have one little trick that I have. Even though I have a very difficult time trying to manage and open that eye voluntarily, it, I depend totally on my left eye, which is about 75% open most of the time. If I take my hand and just cup my eye that's effective and open, it pops open and I can look at you. I cannot do that under normal circumstances. And I, therefore, there's something in the shift of energy or what's going on with dystonia. It is a dystonic disorder, of course. Um, I like to believe that, uh, uh, as Dr. Sebs showed me some tricks just a matter of minutes ago, that uh, there's something else going on here, and maybe Dr. Sebs will explain it best. Oh, popsicle sticks and put them in my mouth to take a good bite on it. <laughs> You're my hero. <laughs> Thank you, AJ. I hope it like You know what his problem was? This gentleman came, came to me, he had dentures. 17-year-old dentures. What's the first thing that happens with 17-year-old dentures? So here he is. It's in the, it's in the journal. We have done it. But there is no cure, according to the CDC, NIH, and all the other major clinics. This, is, this is, was very interesting. This was an article in the Journal of, of Clinical Movement Disorders. Read the, the, the red part. It said 44%, almost 50% of people who had lower cranial dystonia, which means the, the blepharospasm and the oral mandibular dystonia, and actually other dystonias, had a precipitating event, the most common of which was recent dental work. Almost 50% of them. But yet, it's a sensory trick. Yet they don't ask you, they didn't ask me. Tremor. Involuntary rhythmic muscle contraction and relaxation involving oscillations or twitching movements of one or more body parts. It affects the eyes, ears, eyes, face, head, uh, vocal cords, trunk, legs. They say it, it's in the brainstem or in the cerebellum. Do we know of any nerve that goes to the brainstem? Do we know of any nerve that goes to the cerebellum? Parkinson's disease is one of the, one of the ones uh, associated with tremor. There it is. It's right there in the, in the, in the neural anatomy book, the trigeminal cerebellar pathway. This lady came to see me from Florida. Her head trembled. She had seen four neurologists, had been to all the clinics in, in Florida, and nobody could help her. We made her an orthotic, and her tremors discontinued within that period of time. Sleep-related movement disorders, restless leg syndrome, periodic limb movements, 
also one of the things that's associated with Parkinsonism. First level of treatment they, they utilize is dopamine for restless leg or preliminary, uh, preliminary uh, periodic limb movement. In ladies, they give 20% uh, iron or magnesium. Also, some alternatives that they give are opioids, benzodiazepines, and CPAP machines. Uh, the, the, the drug treatment is not curative. But I wanted to take you, take you and look at that. They use a CPAP machine. What is it that dentists can do that do almost the same thing as a CPAP machine? That look good. Very good, very good. Mandibular advancement, because it increases the oxygen. Increase the oxygen, you decrease, uh, you, you, they have better sleep. Better sleep means less, less problems with bruxism. Less pro problems with bruxism, less problems with uh, peri uh, uh, movement, sleep-related movement disorders. And that's a paper that was written and presented to the American Academy of Neurology. Uh, the, the, the lady, the question was, the, the, the lady that we had the, uh, that has the tremors, her tremors were so bad. She was in a uh, motor vehicle accident 26 years ago, and her head would constantly tremor like this. And you can hear it in her voice, just tremor back and forth, back and forth. And she talked about the, uh, the different, um, the different uh, neurologists that she's been to. She's been to uh, all the universities in Florida, been to all the uh, sport universities, uh, 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 sports clinics that treat movement disorders, been to the Mayo Clinic. She's been to all these different clinics, and they could not solve her problem. Uh, they gave her some uh, medication, and the medication uh, did slightly better, but nothing uh, spectacular. And then she had another motor accident a year and a half ago, and now she can't stop her tremors whatsoever. So her tremors just keep continuing. What is the, the basis of that? Trauma. She had trauma. The thing is, they don't look at the part that had trauma. She had whiplash. What's the first thing that you think of with whiplash? Neck and jaw. Right. Who said that? Very smart. Neck and jaw. In addition to the other three benefits that I have enjoyed from um, wearing the appliance Dr. Sims made for me, um, I also, for about the last 10 years, I have suffered from bouts of horrible restless leg syndrome. No sleep whatsoever, absolutely drives me crazy. One of the worst feelings in the world. Never, wasn't something I came to Dr. Sims for. However, from the time I got the appliance, until I had grounded down and, and you know came back here for the um, checkup, no restless leg syndrome, none. It only started coming back really truly in the last month to six weeks, um, and I can feel how much height I've gained in adjusting it. So my my guess is I will report back, but my guess is that um, my restless leg syndrome will be gone again. I sure hope so. Yeah. And you had it when you, you said you were I had pregnant. it when I, uh, yes, it, it started when I was pregnant. Um, with my first child, I was, um, I can remember three in the morning walking around my coffee table crying because it was the only thing that relieved the sensation of just con having to move. Constantly, constantly, constantly. I, I would tell my husband it felt like I had hamster wheels in my ankles. Like there was just, I had to move them. I had to. And um, I have not been bothered by that for at least the first, I'd say, seven, seven to seven and a half months that I wore the appliance until it got ground down. Yes. <laughs> You're just helping me out so much. Well, I'm here for you, man. <laughs>
<laughs> Very good. If you want to put me on display on December 3rd, call me up. I'm there. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. Gait and balance problems, state of equilibrium or parity, uh, char characterized by cancellation of all forces by equal opposing factors. This is, the fact, this is the act of maintaining an upright posture while standing or in locomotion. There are different types of gates. There's the normal gate, the said Fred Sanford or the ataxic gate, the steppage gate, the uh, hemiplegic, which you saw uh, Mar uh, Maria, the, the lady from, with the wheelchair, diplegic gate, Parkinsonism, Parkinsonian uh, gait. This gentleman here, his brother in Dubai, saw some of the videos that I had posted, called his, oral, uh, called his nephew, who is an oral surgeon at NYU, uh, and the son called the father in Jordan, have him fly to New York to drive down to Maryland just to come see me to see if it was possible that we can do something with him. His, hin he, his head was stuck on his shoulder. His chin was stuck on his shoulder. Okay, one more time. Okay, go ahead and grab a seat in the chair. Good. All right, you did good. Now this is after we walked, we worked with him for about two hours, two and a half hours. Good. Very good. Your chin's not on your chest? No. All right. I want you to turn your head to the left now. Good. Good. All right. We're going to take a walk. All right. You gonna go? One more time. Notice the arm swing. Good, we're gonna do it. This is what surprised me. He started feeling good. <laughs> well, look at you. Go ahead, one more time. A little, one more jog, one more jog. One more jog. Real good. Excellent. Hi. Right. Tell, tell me what you feel. Not bad for two and a half hours, huh?
All right, I'm gonna run through these three real quick. Complex regional pain syndrome, uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Basically, these people have severe pain. It, the lightest touch can cause them severe pain. Again, there is no cure. Do you see a theme that I'm giving you here? There is no cure according to the NIH, according to, to the uh, Mayo Clinic, according to the uh, CDC. Uh, paroxysmal kinesiogenic dyskinesia. Uh, paroxysmal means abnormal movement. Uh, uh, kinesiogenic means it is the, the movement disorder is created by you doing a movement. Uh, dyskinesia means involuntary movement. Again, there is no cure for paroxysmal kinesiogenic dyskinesia. Uh, COPD. Uh, I, I talked to a um, gentleman last night, Dr. Uh, uh, the last one, where I forgot his name. Sorry. Right. And he is one of the smart guys. It, it says uh, COPD. Uh, uh, there, there is no cure because they have shortness of breath. They're, uh, a progressive disease, but yet you can treat them because if you open the airway and you increase the oxygen and the nitrogen, you can get them better. But there is, accord according to the CDC and NIH, there is no cure for uh, COPD. Tourette syndrome, uh, neurological condition caused by repetitive stereotyped involuntary movements and vocalizations called tics. There are simple tics and there is uh, uh, complex ticks, between, usually between 3 and 18 years old, 4% of children, and it can be transient or chronic. Simple ticks are blinking or uh, facial grimacing, shoulder shrugging, head or shoulder movement uh, jerking, uh, vocalizations. Uh, complex ticks can be uh, a combination of any of these, such as facial grimacing and a twisting or sh shrugging of shoulders. Uh, jumping, uh, kids jump or the people jump, jump around, bending, twisting. Uh, they, they have, uh, they have uh, echolalia or copolalia, which is the bad words that come out sometimes. Uh, they have self-injurious type of tics, um, such as they want to punch themselves in the face or poke themselves in the eyes. That's Tourette's syndrome. Again, according to the NIH and according to uh, Mayo Clinic, according to CDC, there is no cure. Officially, there is no cure for Tourette's syndrome. It is lifelong, but it's not degenerative, and they have a normal life expectancy. Uh, and it does not impair their intelligence. This young man came to see me from... Europe? From Texas. So, this is Alex, and um, tell him how old you are, and... I'm 11. Oh, okay, so I guess I'll talk. So, um, so Alex is 11, and he's had um, a, a wide variety of ticks since he was probably, I don't know, five years old or so. Um, they vary in severity, of course. Um, he tends to have a lot of vocal ticks, a lot of um, head jerking and eye rolling, to, and um, so um, we've been struggling with it for several years and. We've tried just about everything with the exception of medication. We've tried um, exercises and we've been to lots of different doctors, but to no avail. So we came to see Dr. Sims and um, he talked to us about um, the nerve at the back of the jaw that is compressed and um, can um, create ticks, of course. And so, um, as you can see, um, his ticks get pretty high. So um, we were, of course, ready to try something different, especially since um, at some point um, you just don't know what to do. True. I know that the ticks sometimes hurt, and, and when they're high, they can get to be pretty debilitating. As you can see, Alex's ticks right now are, are kind of ratcheted up. Sometimes they're lower, but right now they, they're, they're fairly strong, actually. What do you, so tell them about the device. What do you think of the device when you put it in? Don't put it in yet, but what do you think about it? How it, does it feels good. And it takes away my ticks, and if not 100%, it decreases the amount and makes them lighter. So, yeah. How long have you had it? Uh, since I was like two or three. Okay. How many doctors have you seen? Like, 
Sorry. Three? No, more than that. We've seen more. Than, in the last few years, we've se seen several. We've talked to uh, the neurologist. We've talked to chiropractic neurologists. We've seen homeopathic doctors. We've, I mean, we've researched. We've done dietary changes, eliminating gluten, eliminating dairy. We've done supplements, vitamins, everything. Vitamin D increase. I mean, the whole. We did the whole gamut. I mean, we've tried everything, and nothing has had any remarkable or lasting effect on him. And unfortunately, as he's gotten older, the tics have gotten stronger and more invasive. Um, and, you know, he's had to deal with varying levels of bullying and problems in school, and sometimes it makes it very difficult for him to focus because he gets tired from, from ticking so much. Um, this year has been particularly challenging, which is why we decided to try something different. And we read quite a bit before we came over here, and part of it is a leap of faith every time you try something different. Um, but um, we've been pretty amazed. Faith is always strong, right? Um, yeah, anything you want to tell someone? Anyone who out there mm -hmm. who maybe thinks that... Call a locker sims. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a good man. You are a good, kind man, a good soul. Thank you. You are a good soul, and he mm -hmm. is unassuming and uh, very patient and very kind, and apparently mm -hmm. very, very smart. <laughs> and um, shall we try putting in the device so you can see the difference? So you want to show them what the device looks like? It's kind of a funny-looking little thing. It has little, I guess, the little pins to hold the, I guess, to hold it in place, and it's just a little. It goes yeah. in and it adds space. Feels good. And that's it. <laughs> and you know, that's huge. That part's the huge part. There's nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good.